Hey guys, this is Roger Regatta coming back to the follow-up stream here, live from Hangar Billers and Sports Lounge at 121 Scurfield Boulevard. We're going to go straight into it because we already missed like a little bit of rack, so I don't want to be too choppy on it. 7-6 is a score. Tom Hughes just won the last game, and he's now currently down by one. It's a race to nine between these guys. Internet. I don't know if it was the internet connection or if it was the equipment itself, but something didn't go right. Oh, and I didn't go live here yet. All right, so there's the stream now. Okay, good. I thought I might have lost the stream, but we're good. Doing everything like I usually do right now, just to get everything set up. All right, so the YouTube chat is back. This is Tom Hughes at the table. Trying to tie things up here in this race to nine. Smith with an opportunity now to get on the hill. Thanks to a turnover from Tom Hughes. Tom is a 607 forward rate, and Guy Smith is a 527 forward rate. Little wobbly shot there, but the cue ball position is perfect. Might be too good almost. I mean, he's got the shot on the 11 ball, but he actually has pretty good shot here on the 10 ball, which is kind of the ball that he needs to address. However, if he can set up from the 11 for the 10 ball with a follow through angle, he can open up this 15 and 12 ball. What's that? For what? Oh, smack it. Oh. That's why God created poles. I said, that's why God created poles. <laughs> well, it's so easy, you don't even think about it. I know. Trust me, I've been playing scrambly pool for the last three days, so I, trust me, I know. Yeah. When you play good, it's nice. Scrambly pool, not fun, man. I have scrambly pool, too. At least lately, anyway. Uh, I don't know. Check out the angles. Just waiting for a player to shoot from the left side here where he can get going. I don't like the way that camera looks, so I gotta fix that now. Well, he's opened up to two stripes and he gets an opportunity to finish this rock now.
Almost done. I'm still trying to get this set up here. I'm not digging it, man. I'm trying to fix this camera, but it's not looking very good. He's on the hill. I don't know, that might be better. All right, so let's make it official. Guy Smith on the hill, looking to get the finish here on his break. Chance to break for the match. First chance to break for the match. If Tom wins this one, it would be 7-8. Tom breaks the next one, it would be 8-8, which means that Guy Smith will get the last break in a hill hill situation. Rack number 15. Guy Smith to break. Smashed it, made a ball to the corner. Cuba bounces off the side pocket and we'll give him an opening shot. It's people walking by. Toughest ball on the table for him is the 15 ball. Got in tight on this 12 ball, limited angle to work with. Likely going to end up bumping into this 2 ball and push, pushing it over towards the 9. Now you can push into it with a little bit of extra confidence to make sure that it gets out of the way. But then you might be taken away from the shot. Well, I was good. He broke out that ball, so that made the table a little bit easier. I'll be right back.
There were some people that were standing there, and I was going to go ask them to move because they didn't know that this was a A-side final matchup. Um, but they ended up moving on their own, so it worked out all right. Almost at the finish line. Eight ball is sitting right to the left of the cue ball right now, so he's got to play the cue ball up table, get up for the nine, come down for the 12, and then come down for the eight. Or if he can get the 12 ball, that will work too. It's better if he gets to the nine ball, though. Now, he's not happy about this, but I'm telling you, this actually worked out really nice. This worked out really, really nice, because now he's going to be able to at least play position for that 12 ball, for sure. He just has to control the nerves here and make sure that he strokes through the shot. Now, he didn't quite get the angle that he wanted, so now he's got to kind of trust the cue ball a little bit. If I was him, what I'd be trying to do here is just play the cue ball through the left cushion, off the right cushion, and setting up for the eight ball, I'd go on the left side middle, or in the top right corner. He's going to bump into it. That's going to change things. He'll have an option here for a bank corner with a one ball sort of helping, but also at the same time kind of blocking the shot on the eight ball. Crucial point here because if you make it you're out if you don't you give your chance you give a chance to your opponent to get within one with him breaking next anything can happen at that point so whatever choice he makes here it's got to be something he can live with Goes for the cut, and what a cut, wow. What a shot, what a finish. Nine to six, the final score, and Guy Smith locks in at least guaranteed second place. And we need to get some more matches going. We've got people all over the place. Uh, I'm going to see if we have another match, or if we can switch another match to this table. I'll be right back. Race to five on the B side, yeah, so it's faster. All right, so those guys are going to finish their last track. Yeah, no, I can see. Yeah, yeah. They come they come together. They do come together. Yeah. Trust me, like, every every bit of billiards that you can learn, whether it's eight ball, nine ball, ten ball, English billiards, they all come together, man. Yeah, I can see that. I think it's... All the edge cuts in this game. Like yeah. 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 Like I'm doing here a sculpture. Yeah. 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 You'll see. It'll work out. I really like. All right. So then, uh, up next, we got a B side final matchup, or sorry, semi final. Race to five on the B side, so it's faster pace. Uh, semi final. Like yeah, more than likely, yeah. No, maybe not. 
No, I mean, like, uh, Greg Wilson plays really, really good. He's playing against Dave right now, but we're not playing against Tom, so. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. From what I've seen, he's, he's, he's not like that. Tom, you make a mistake, you want him to take it. Yeah. Unless there's problems. Different, le- different levels, though, because Tom's more of a career player. Right? Where, yeah, Greg's more of a Super Vegas level. All right, so this is uh, David Wilkes. Against Greg Wilson. They're just finishing up the last rack over there. It's a race to five on the B side, so way faster on the B side. Greg Wilson. And down the Fargo rates. Update the bracket, the scoreboard. And it's 1-1 one, one over there. Not sure who won the game. They're still playing, actually. I wonder... I can probably get over there with my other camera. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, there's somebody standing in the way, so it makes no difference. Looks like um, David Wilkes won that game. Two one for Dave. Yeah. That would be. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can move this over. All right. All right, so it's 2-1 for David Wilkes. You know what your Fargo rate? You know what your Fargo rate is? It's probably like a, like okay, a, you know. a real fierce 520. <laughs> a real fierce 520? Funny. Okay. I'll check right away. You know that it would be untrue. You know that I would be a liar if I was to say to you, God, we couldn't get my child. 47. Come on, baby, light my fire. 47. And. Greg, do you know what your Fargo is? You know what your Fargo rate is? Yeah, thank you. 573. Uh, ooh, they're playing Werewolves of London right now. Oh, yeah, baby. Set the mood for a Saturday night showdown here at the hangar. Rack number four of this B side semifinal matchup. Between David Wilkes and Greg Wilson. Dave is a 487 Fargo rate. Greg Wilson, a 573 Fargo rate. As a race to five, it's a two to one score. Dave with a chance to get a two game lead here. Winner of this match will have to play against Tom Hughes in the B side final. Winner of that match has to play against Guy Smith, who won the A side. Every time I hear that song, I think of Tom Cruise walking around being a jerk at the table. <laughs> that was a great movie, man. Slide overcut. He was walking through the shot as he was shooting it. 527 Fargo rating, eh? Yeah, I know, and he's got like 400 or 500 games on there, so, yeah. Harold, what's up, bro? Says, hello, Rod, missed you today. 
Where's my hug, man? <laughs> uh, nice shot, says Brian Sterling. That was a little bit earlier. Yeah, that was I shot on that eight ball. I'm pretty sure I saved it. We're going to look at it. But we must look at it. Okay. Yeah, this is a nice cut for the win. Beautiful cut, man. All right, I got to go watch the shot. I'll be back. Oh, yeah. Two one. It was a good hit. And Dave Wilkes with an opportunity here to take the lead still, or to continue his lead, I should say. Hello, Samantha Jane, Baby Che. Welcome to the stream. No one, Aliana, if you guys are watching, I love you guys. My family, family tuning in to the stream means one or two things. Either they miss me or they're hungry. <laughs> Usually, I have to be the little guy that's missing me. Nice shot, though. Gonna get a position on the 14 ball, also. Really nice shot. Eight ball sitting above the five ball, so I'm not sure what he's gonna do for the eight ball, but I think if he gets the cue ball all the way across to the right, he might be able to sneak in a shot to the top left corner. There's a little separation between them. Made the shot. Take a look at the side angle here. You can see there's a little bit of separation between the five and the eight. Kind of like a shot to nowhere here. He doesn't really have the shot, but he's calling something because he doesn't have much. Oh, he almost made it. Now, I got to eat my words there because I, I thought he was going to go for an off-the-top real kick shot just to try to go off the ball and maybe squeeze it to that corner. But he tried to cross bend corner, and he wasn't too far off. It was actually a pretty decent try. Like, he, he just barely missed it. If that, if that eight ball just hits over uh, maybe two inches over to the right from where it hit, it goes in the pocket because he had the perfect angle. Really nice try. Greg Wilson, glad to have the opportunity at the table. Short race to five. Usually means you got to be a little bit more alert at the table and you have to do your best to capitalize on all opportunities as much as you can. Trying to play the three rails around. Comes up quite short from what he was trying to do. He'll still have an option to make the six ball, though. He's going to miss the shot. Did he play it on a two-way? I think he did. He did. He's going to leave Dave a kick shot. It's a pretty good chance that he's going to make it. I mean, even if he just contacts it and hits it at a medium pace, it might just go off that three ball into the corner. If he tries to hit it straight, though, there's a chance where he might come up short by running into the three ball. But he hit it good, and he kind of got away with it. Unless he left in the six ball, which I think he left in the six ball. He almost got away with it. Oh, you guys came out to play in the tournament today. Oh, I see. Man, I uh, I was going to come earlier, but no, I just couldn't do it, man. I ended up getting here like around 3.30, I think it was. Mm 
Then I set up my equipment and I started streaming. I think I was wrong just after four. It wasn't much of an easy shot, but he took it on like a champ. Tough cut on this one. Huge reward. Oh, man, but he's going to come up short on the three ball. He had the setup for the two. He had the angle to get set up for the six ball. It's kind of away with it a little bit here, but he's playing against a player that has some one-pocket experience, so a bank shot is kind of comfortable for him. Let's see. He took a big breath from that one, so obviously this is a stressful shot for him. He's going to come up short of it, too. Is he going to get lucky? Maybe, maybe. A little bit of an opportunity there with the 6 and the 8 being where they are. Three ball is the easiest shot in the world right now, chilling by the pocket. But you might want to take that two ball on. I don't know. Or maybe you want to leave that two ball for the breakout on the 6. Or maybe you just want to play a safety off the 6 ball right now. World of options here. You have to live with the circumstances depending on what he chooses to do. Going all out for an opportunity to win. He'll bump the six ball and get a shot on the two ball. Worked out pretty good. Oh, no, he's going to miss the six ball now. And he's going to leave another opportunity here for David Wilkes. But this time, it's a better opportunity. He's got to make it in the pocket. That's all he's telling himself right now. But you know they're feeling a bit of a sting now being on the TV table. He'll make the shot on the eight ball, though. And he'll take a two-game lead. 3-1 is the score, David Wilkes breaking next, and Rack number 5. Feeling pretty good about his game right now as he's racking the balls. A little bit of extra confidence perhaps going into the next break. Smashed him, but he lost the cue ball. Greg Wilson getting up to the table. Feeling pretty good about having an opportunity here. I'd like to close the gap a little bit. A two-game gap is a huge gap when it's a race to five. I'm tightening up here. Getting within one would be ideal. Starting off with a one ball, looking for an angle on the two ball to open up the three ball. Oh, maybe not. Let's see, he's setting up for the seven ball, which is one of the problem balls. But technically, the five ball would have got him onto that seven ball. I guess he can set up for the two ball with breakout angle here. Not going to get it, though. I'll have to change the shot here, either to the four or the five. If he had the six ball, the six ball might work, but... Then you're going to push those strikes around, which might tie up your two ball, so I'm not sure you want to do that. Now he's going to have a good angle on that two ball, but he doesn't have much of an escape shot. 
needs to find a follow-up shot from either the three or the six ball here. Well, you can see the three ball, but there's not much of an opportunity there. Maybe a bank corner. And I don't think that goes because that 14 ball blocks the pass. Smart to choose not to mess anything up in that area and just leave things the same. He kind of more or less though forced David Wilkes into a safety battle here. He's going to get straight into it. Oh, they hit the three ball first. It, it looked to me like he did, but I'm over here, so I don't know. There's no way I can zoom it in here. Um, It, it looked like it to me. I made the comment on the stream. Oh, did you? But, yeah. Oh, okay. but, uh, I want to see it. But, uh, yeah, we want to see it. So that's why I went to, to Facebook or to YouTube here so you can see it. See it? Both the same. Okay. No, no, just watch the three ball, right? Pretty sure that was a foul. I have to look it over and over and over again. Oh, I don't know, man. Okay, so the only thing I can really do here is record it. So now we're going to go see on this uh, recording. It looked like you hit the three ball first from the blind deck. Oh, yeah, for sure you hit the three ball first. Barely, but he did. I'll have to show it to him later. It's going to go too far, but he has an option to make the 12 ball to the bottom left corner still. Decent angle to work with here on the 13 ball, but he's going to have to power stroke this a little bit just to get across with a 15. And he's gone a little bit too far, which would have been one of the concerns on that shot. Now, you can probably back cut this 15 ball, but the angle that he's got on the cue ball is taking him towards the side pocket. So if he was to try to avoid that with some bottoms or some bottom spin or some draw spin on it, um, that would make him avoid the scratch. But then again, he might be missing the shot because of that. And only because it's a little bit of a back cut. And we'll see what he decides to do. He might just play safety here. Oh, that's what he was trying to do. 
the goal there was to play the cue ball off the left side cushion and back on top of the nine, but instead ended up scratching, which wasn't part of the plan. Lucky break here for Greg Wilson. Ball in hand, two balls remaining, plus the eight ball for a chance to get within one. It was a foul, says Harold. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, man. <laughs> Buddy Harold. What's up, Felicia? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. He's going to just try to draw this around this eight ball to get on the left side of the eight. Play it through to break into it. He just drew over to the left side to settle for a cut to the top right corner. That was third option, which I didn't see. Got him to the finish line anyway, and he'll make the eight ball down by one. Three to two. Uh, Robin says, is uh, chat stuck on screen? No. no. It just depends when people interact or not. Uh, that's why I stopped using it, right? People interact on it, but then they don't interact on it, so then it just kind of sits there for a while. <laughs> YouTube's a little more interesting than Facebook. The Facebook people tend to talk a lot, so they've been pretty quiet for the last little while. While the YouTube people, they have like moments, man. There, there's days where like they're just interacting all the time, and then there's days where just watching and just enjoying the the pool. Trying to work that cue ball. He still don't put up that 14 ball, which he has an opportunity to do so right now. He'll open it up, but he'll miss the shot on the 15 ball. And as long as he doesn't scratch, he might be all right. Dave Wilkes with limited opportunities here. If you can see the two ball, that would be an option. If not, it's the one five combo. I don't think the one goes by on its own. Oh, it did. He just missed the shot. That's all. Unfortunately for him, he's going to leave 
the 15 ball for a startup shot here for Greg Wilson. Out to the corner is good. Gets it up for the 14 ball to the side pocket. Needs to roll this up for the 8 ball. Could even just barely roll it up for the 8 ball. He's going to fully roll it up for the 8 ball, and that's going to push the cue ball behind the 2 ball, leaving Greg Wilson with a jump shot. I don't think there's any way around it. He's got to jump it. He's going for a kick shot. Wow. It's only about a half ball jump, man. I would go for the jump shot here. Oh, he'll foul. That's a ball in hand for David Wilkes, who will get a chance to get on the hill now. Winner of this has to play against Tom Hughes. Winner of that has a double dip in Guy Smith. I believe it's a double dip. I'll, I'll have to find out, but I'm pretty sure. He almost rattled that ball to the corner there. Two balls the only option that he has that makes sense right now. He's taking the tougher shot to the corner, but he's going to make it. Greg had the option to roll that ball back to where it was or to leave it there. He's going to have to leave it there for his opponent. And that's going to work out pretty good right now because he's got the shot on the seven ball. If he's got the shot on the five, that's the shot he should be taking. He needs to draw the cue ball up to able to get a downward angle on that two ball after him. It's going to have an upward angle instead. Now you can try like the pocket weight shot and then just settle for a back on the epo. You can let this cue ball go around, set up for the epo in the bottom right corner. You can make it go around even more and set up for the side pocket where it's at right now. It's getting busy at the hangar. Almost every table is taken up right now. Yeah, you can also do a draw back here and just settle for the bottom right corner. That's another option, too. And so he's trying to weigh out his options. He's going to go with the follow-through shape for the eight ball through the bottom right corner instead. I think that was the right call. Made a good decision, got rewarded with a finish. He's on the hill. Four to two. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it, man. On the hill and going for the kill. He's breaking here in rack number seven.
He has mad face, his game face. I don't know many good players that are like not serious at the table. Almost every good player always has that serious killer look. Like it's all business, man. It's all business. What? What did he have? A barbecue? Somebody jacked. Well, it sounded like a lot of movement, but I don't think anything dropped. So, Greg Wilson gets another opportunity in this matchup. First chance at this track. Back against the wall now. Needs to win three games if he wants to win the match. Cannot let his opponent win one single game. If he does, it is over. Well, that's going to be a turnover. What's up, Bruce Jensen? Welcome to the stream. Kevin says we have great customers. Definitely do. Nice crowd here today. Every table is being used right now. Even the, the coin ops, they're all being used right now. Typical Saturday, though, at the hangar. Looking for the finisher, taking the 14 to start. The biggest problem ball that he had, the eight ball is another problem ball, but a couple of stripes around it to be able to open it up, so not that big of a problem. Next shot is a bit of a concern though, not to go side pocket, so that's, that's all right. If he didn't have that option though, he was gonna be in a jam, so that worked out pretty good. And that didn't work out good for him. Now he's gonna be stuck playing a combo. Which I don't think he even has the combo. Can maybe try to back up this nine ball or have shot with really no no reward behind it. Try to play the combo. Hits it with a little bit of extra pace. The fifteen ball is gonna get tied up amongst all the solids on the top of the table. Greg Wilson with another chance in this rack. Didn't capitalize on the first chance, so he's gonna do his best to capitalize on this one. How you doing, Dixie Pinchback? Welcome to the stream on YouTube. <laughs> Harold says, that's it, Rod. I hardly win because I'm too nice. Yeah, I know. You, you got to have a mean face, man. Like, if you can't make, like, this really mean, like, I don't know what somebody put in my food, but it tastes awful face, then you're just not playing good pool. <laughs> I see that. that that's how it is like you watch anybody that's playing at the highest level when they're running tables and they're in stroke they have the meanest face in the world if you took that face and you went and told your boss you wanted a raise I promise you you would get a raise either that or they, they'd be calling the cops because that's a scary face <laughs> It's how I get my raises. <laughs> Kidding. I just put my pool face on. I'm like, oh no. I don't know if he's going to run me out if I'm going to get hurt, but I better give this guy a raise. <laughs> Everybody has it. It's the gift from the pool gods to you. You get a chance to be serious face. Now, I'm trying to think of how many, how many players I know here in Manitoba that like aren't like that, that just smile all the time when they're playing. I might be one of the few, but most of the times when I'm serious, man, like it's, I'm serious. Right? Everybody looking at me like they did something wrong to me. Oh, nice shot. Beauty. Wasn't trying to make it though. It was a safety. Yeah, you got to have a mean mug and face, man. Number one rule in pool. 
If you look really mean, that sometimes the cue ball listens to you. <laughs> Only sometimes. I practice my mean face all the time, though. Doesn't get me anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. There was a table trying to set up next to my other camera, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was safe around my camera. What's up? Dixie says, couldn't find it any other way I used to get notified when you were streaming. Well, you subscribe to the channel, right? If you if you subscribe to the channel, then it should point you like it should give you notifications. Um, but sometimes I don't know, like so, face or not Facebook, YouTube has an algorithm that basically it's it's trained to understand your likes and dislikes and try to feed um, videos that support what you like. So let's say that you got notified from watching the streams from me, but then you decide not to watch that stream. Then the next time you get notified again that I'm streaming. And you decide not to watch that stream. By the third time, it starts thinking that, you know what, maybe this person doesn't really like watching this. Maybe it was just a mistake. So then it starts looking for other things that you liked or other videos that you watched. And then it tries feeding you that content. So that's kind of how it kind of how YouTube works. Um, but yeah, like I noticed there's there's people that I follow on YouTube that I subscribe to their channels. And, and when I first subscribe to their channels, I'm getting notifications all the time. But as I stop watching their channels, all the time then it slowly starts giving me other notifications of different things usually all pool related because i'm all about pool i'm thinking that there's a notification option though that you can put on there to make sure that you notify you get notified every time that i go live but i'm not sure It's going to miss the shot to the corner in a good way, though. Had up the three ball. Had a decent chance there for the closeout, and he's feeling a little stressed out that he didn't get it. This is uh, another mental block that players go through when you're in a position like this where it's a like race to five and it's 4-2, and like you're itching to win. You want to win so bad that every time you don't win, it's making you get stressed out. Well, what happens here is that the more you do that, the more difficult it becomes for you to be able to have positive mentality when you're playing at the table. And it's harder to also make better decisions when you're at the table. See, and so now like he's rushing over there right away to shoot because he's feeling a little bit stressed out. But he should be relaxed here because he's in a tough position. And, and technically, like he hasn't lost his rack yet. He could still win this rack. Though right now the chances are that he's going to lose it because of the way the setup is at the table. But as long as he has a 13 ball and he ends up contacting the rail, you never know. You know he might be all right. 
And there is a little bit of room for him to maybe like mass off the rail to cut into that third team ball to make it. So I, I don't know, man. Just got to get focused. Just got to get focused. Eric Lewis says, hit the bell for notifications. Yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll get notified for sure. Don't forget to like the stream if you guys are watching it also. Well, he at least hit it, which is good. And he's going to sort of maybe get rewarded here. Not really. He's left a long shot. Greg should be able to make it. Cape for the three ball will be interesting, though, unless he sets up for the top left corner. Oh, he'll be all right. He's going to run perfectly into the 13 ball for the shape on the three. A little bit of a reward there for having some confidence in the shot. A little bit too much pace in that one to get to the top left corner, but the left side middle will work. And perhaps that's what he was shaping up for because he's perfect on it. Four to three. He's down by one. Race to five. B side semi final. Survival time. Survival time. Well, and this is going to put a little bit more stress now on David Wilkes to make sure that he finishes his table because, you know, otherwise it's going to go to the hill. But what he actually has to do here is just be a little bit more relaxed, more calm, and just try to find a way to win this round. You know, if it's wide open, sure, run it out. But if it ain't, don't force the table, man. Let your opponent force the table for you. Play with the table, not against it. Don't force a situation if it ain't there. Greg Wilson's going to be breaking, though, and if he makes a ball, you've got to go ahead to tie things up. As long as the table opens up decent off the break, which we're about to find out here in rack number eight. Looking for some action. Smashed it, but he lost the cue ball. Ball in hand for David Wilkes. Behind the line, BNA rules. You can only shoot forward on a scratch off the break. But this table's looking mighty, mighty good right now. Everything's out in the open except for the eight ball. But I think the eight ball might even go. See, this is a moment where you have to be smart, you know. Don't go too crazy here. Work the table out patiently. It's a crucial time. And you don't want to end up having to deal with the mentality of knowing that you had a chance and you came up short because you just rushed it or you made the wrong choice too soon. So you got to work it out. Torchu says, I just remind myself that it's only a game. Always helps me relax. Yeah, and that's the, that's the key. Honestly, that's the biggest key to being successful on the table. Just remind yourself that it's just a game. In the end, no, no. In the end, wherever you, um, this guy was trying to put a cue right on my camera. Like, what's wrong with you, man? They're not going over my camera. I'm trying to avoid that from happening today. All right, so he did take low ball. He almost has the perfect angle here to make the two ball and break out the eight. But... Oh, he's going to try it. Oh, he's going to make it. Does he get the shot? I think he got the shot. If he doesn't have the shot on the six, then... Unfortunately, he's got to work this table out still on it. Oh, it's so close. If if he has it, he's going to take it for sure. It looks to me like he has it. From this angle, it looks like 100% like he has it. From the other angle, it doesn't. Oh, he had it. It's going to get through perfectly for the four ball. And now all he's got to do is find the eight ball for the finish. People walking around, so he's going to take his time to work this out. 
Looking for the angle of where he wants the eight ball. Or where he wants the cue ball for the eight ball. You can spin with some inside spin to the right side of the table and sell for a back cut on the eight. Or you can play the cue ball all the way up and try to get to the top rail. Oh, he was trying to run into an 11 ball, but he doesn't. And he's going to have to go for a kick shot now. Trying to be patient there, not forcing the table too much. April has gone in a tough spot, so I don't know if he's going to get another chance at this table. I'm feeling fairly confident on this going to the hill. I just can't see Greg Wilson screwing this up anyway. It's all kind of opened up here. If any issue is going to happen, it's going to happen right now. Got to the corner is good. Gonna end up just on top of the eight, which means that he won't be able to take that 14 ball. Well, I guess he could take it on, but he's likely gonna end up taking on the nine ball instead. Might have to finish on that 14 or 12, whatever it is that's sitting at the top that he was shaping up for just now. But he can play this all the way through. He doesn't have to play for the 10 ball next, but I, I here I'm playing the nine ball, then the 10 ball, then that 12 or 14. Oh, just hit the rail. <laughs> I thought you would take the nine ball there. Nine, nine, ten, then the twelve. Yeah, yeah. It happens in spurts, man. So, like, this week you don't feel good. Next week you'll feel good. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll make a difference. And corner for the win, and he nails it. What a shot. Hugs all around. What a finish. Five to three, the final score. What a finish. What a shot, man. I had a feeling it was going in. Wire to the pocket. If you're going to go out, you go out in style. That's the way to do it. All right, B-side final now. They're having a smilk break. We'll reset things here. I'll we'll get everything set up. Race to five in the B side final. Let's switch them over here this way. I gotta find Tom Hughes' far rate. I don't remember it. I know it was just over six. Six or seven. Barter rates have been refreshed and they're up.
So, yeah. Yeah. What happens? Like I play the B side. I don't know if it's a double dip or not because it's weird. Like it nine, nine, five. Twice, it should right? be, but it's long race, so I don't know. He, he. I don't know. It's Tim's tournament, right? So I have no idea what he wanted to do. They're just about to play the B side final. Uh, Six twenty-five and under, yeah. Yeah. No handicap. No handicap. Race to nine on the A side. Race to five on the B side. Nine the B side. Not, nine a side yeah five on the beast hey, is it is it true double dip hey tim is it true double dip is it true double dip nine five what's first place okay Take it down. Oh, okay. Five fifty for first. They're about to get this started. This is B side final and then the championship match. Double. All right, David Wilkes, Tom Hughes, 607 Fargo Raid and Tom Hughes, 487 Fargo Raid for David Wilkes. Race to five. Time to get going in this matchup. Winner of this match has to double dip Guy Smith, who won the A-side. Tough, tough to do. The way he's playing today, that's tough to do. Yeah, so nobody steals it, man, just in case. Not that there's many thefts here, but... It's at your own uh, judgment if you end up leaving your cases behind somebody ends up stealing it. How many players were there? How many did they have? 14. They had 14 players. Eric, they had 14 players. Dixie says, I almost made it to Winnipeg this month. My granddaughter was on an Olympic path until she dislocated her shoulder and now needs surgery. Oh man, that's too bad. That's too bad. You know, I know a lot of people that have become pool players from those kind of injuries. They were, you know, either in different sports or whatever the case, and um, baseball or hockey or football. And then they got they got their shoulder injured, and then they slowly played pool as like something to do in between, and eventually became pool players. Uh, but that's too bad. It's unfortunate she didn't get her opportunity to go out to the Olympics. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be. Maybe she wasn't quite ready yet, and the creator decided to give her another year of growth. Match is on now. Dave Wilkes shooting. Uh, Smith was standing there in the way. You get it on like King Kong, says Harold. What's up, Mike Orvis? Tune in tomorrow for that Sunday Open April. I'll be here for that one also. Scared deep gas way, so. Uh, you're in the same field. Huh? You're in the same. You guys play for me? Yeah. What'd you guys play for? 50. Race, race. I had to go to seven. He had to go to five. I had to go to seven. 
Gotta go to work for ten o'clock. My witness, there's seal. Hey, you're ready. Want to count it? Like I say, you're my witness. You brought seals. Yeah, I'm my witness. He gave you two envelopes. He gave you two envelopes. He gave you two envelopes. One envelope. All he gave me was uh, second and third. Yeah. So what are the payments? Five fifty, fifty, twenty. He's saving Davies guaranteed two bits. He's us. I'm super happy. I'm working a little bit. It's been better. Yeah. He's never been a bad player. He's just not been on. Yeah, he needs to like work out his pattern, but when he's on like this, he just doesn't miss. Like, he just shoot real good. I hope he keeps his energy up. Actually takes it. Six hundred three hundred saying would be you know why the first Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Dixie says she's taking it pretty hard. Next one is four years only. Well, that that's the problem with Olympics. The Olympics is you know four years apart, right? The Olympic career is very short. Very very short. I think on average, like the the long competitors, they might get like six Olympics in in their time in their lifetime. <clears throat> but. You know, she's just gotta know that uh, have have faith in 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 life, and trust me, it happened for a reason. It'll give her more time to grow too. So, next four years from now, she'll be a lot more mature, better competitive mentality, and will want it more now because she missed out on this opportunity. So, that, all overall, I think it's actually going to be a really good thing for her. Even though it's not a good thing right now at the moment, but in the long run. Eight ball to the side. I believe that was the first rack. Oh, man. Just roughed my camera up, but it's okay. One nothing for David Wilkes. I haven't had a break yet, so I'm going to have a break soon. And I'm either going to have it right away or I'm going to have it after this match before they start the, the championship match. Uh, I guess this rack will help me decide on which time it's going to be. You need a breaker? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's really nice. I thought I needed more more control, but I think I need more speed. Yeah. Well, and it starts off with 17 now, so it's like a drink. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I did. I didn't like it. Way too late. Yeah, way too late. I, I might bring it down to just like 19 ounces. I think that's probably about the right way. Uh, 18 is probably ideal, but then like you might jump the white ball off the table for it, so that's why I'm going to put 19.
That's exactly what I think, says Dixie. This next year will tell a lot. Yeah, I'm telling you, like, I don't know. The way I, the way I look at life is everything that's meant to happen for you will happen when it's supposed to happen for you. And there's two things that change that. When, when you deviate from your path and try to create your own path, or when the wrong path approaches you and you feel like it's the right one, and then you commit to it. So it's okay to try it out. Like if, if something comes your way and you decide to try it out because you're thinking, well, it came my way, maybe it's supposed to happen, right? Um, sometimes the little steps that we take in life, and I mean like jobs, for example, like you got this job here doing construction, then next thing you know, you get a job as a salesman. Next thing you know, you get a job as a cook or whatever. Um, everything that you do in life will eventually lead you to where you're supposed to be. So that, that's the way I look at life. And when it comes to things like this nature where like somebody's trying to go out to compete and, and an injury happens, usually it's because of for, for a real reason, right? So maybe this was going to be like her chance, but maybe it was going to be the only chance where now like she's going to have more time to be uh, trained better and to become more confident in her way. And then maybe that will become a permanent chance in the future. Something where she'll be competing in the Olympics every time until she can't anymore right because eventually like after so many years after so many olympics most most athletes have to retire and i think the average athlete retires in like the early 30s mid 30s all right so we're tied at one tom hughes wearing the white sweater now and the light blue jeans he's breaking next Moving into rack number three of this matchup. 1-1 one, one is the score. It's a short race to five. Also gets a dry break, and David Wilkes will get a crack at it. Tied a one in a crucial match, guaranteed third place right now. Would like to be guaranteed second, at least, by winning this one. Then again, though, if he wins this one, opportunity for first is right there. Solids and stripes look all right, but the stripes are a little bit harder. The solids aren't that great either. You know, the, the two, or sorry, the three and the six next to the eight, not a very good option to deal with there. Though the six does go to the top left corner. The five ball being so close to that eight ball is kind of a good thing because you have to break out the eight ball, but it's tough to get onto that five ball. The only option you would get to get onto it would be by breaking in that eight ball and, and uh, 14 ball off that rail by shooting the seven ball, which... No guarantee he's going to get a shot on the fireball from there. So he's got to be careful on the choice that he makes. Actually, yeah, I actually like the stripes a little bit better, just slightly. But that's, that's what he's looking at as well, you know, take the stripes. Makes the shot to the corner, and he's going to get into that area where that 9 and 15 ball are. This is not going to help him to get that 14 ball off the rail, though. So even if he makes this shot, 
he still has to create a breakout angle for the next shot. Dixie says that was really nice of you, Rod. Thank you. I, I try to just be the same way I usually am. Uh, Dixie says, I use my mom's cue for breaking. I think it's a uh, 19. Yeah, he needed a breaking cue, and, and I have a pretty good breaking cue. So, and he's in a, like, uh, Dave's in a spot right now where he can maybe finish in the top two. Something that he doesn't always do in these kind of tournaments. So, he's feeling pretty good. I want to be able to give him an opportunity to be able to continue feeling pretty good by competing well um every chance that he gets which includes the breaks by using my pool cue or my breaking cue lost my chat says dixie um then she says i totally think that way rod everything happens for a reason now she can concentrate on her schoolwork so as not to lose the full ride scholarship she was offered and committed to yeah that's what i'm saying so everything works out for a reason you know and I know, like, it, the immediate effect of the events that happen around us always affect us somehow me uh, mentally or emotionally. Um, but you just have to trust that things work out for a reason. And sometimes you may not be able to see that reason exactly why. Um, and it does take some time. Um, sometimes it takes even months or years before you figure out why. Um, but just got to trust the process, you know. You were born for your own destiny. Just follow through on it. The worst thing that people do is give up. They give up when they're not supposed to. And then life gets hard and they can never get out of that because they're just so committed to the wrong choice that there's no looking back from that point on. But if you have faith in your in yourself as a human being and what you're trying to do in life, just keep going, you know? If one door closes and the other one opens, follow it. Walk through that door. Destiny is waiting. Eventually you'll you'll see your calling. That that's what brought me to where I am today, doing the work that I do today. I used to be a chef, I used to be a salesman, a uh, car salesman, vacuum salesman. I uh, worked in stores, retail stores, shipping and receiving, forklift driving, roofing, you name it. Nice try, Tom, nice try. Um, but there wasn't many things that I didn't try working on when I grew up. And then out of all the work that I did, all the experience came together to eventually create the person that I am today. All the skills, every job, every person that I met, it all kind of came together to build the future to what I am now. Just got to have faith in it, that's all. Keep taking the steps every day until you get there. And trust me, it's never going to be easy. You know, life is life for a reason. If life, life was easy, the You'd be born well off, everything ready to go, but life is not easy. You, you got to go out there and earn your keep and figure out your, your way in life. Uh, Desiree, where's the draw? It is on Challenge. I'm not sure under whose name, though, but I'll try to find it for you. But I saw a no rail, says Art Lamer. How you doing, Art? Says justice prevailed anyway. Yeah. That's the way it usually works. So there was a situation earlier where one guy like kind of missed a shot. And I said, well, the other guy came up and kind of threw you off a little bit. And I said, but don't worry about it. I said, instead of getting worked up over it, just relax. You know, just keep playing your game and karma will get him. And eventually karma got him right back. So I'm telling you, you know, when things like that happen, it will always work out. That's why you don't you try not to cheat in pool because you will get cheated back eventually. Or something really bad will happen. Like you'll, you'll get hooked on, on the most crucial shot in the rack right at the end, giving your opponent a ball in hand with just the e-pull left, something like that. When it comes to karma, karma is real, just know that. But you can create positive karma and negative karma through your actions, so also believe that. 
Playing the safety, but he's going to scratch. Ball in hand for Tom Hughes. A chance to take the lead now. Ball in hand and a few different options. The one ball being where it is is not a good ball to have where it is. So you might want to start off there and then come down table. Uh, it's up to you. I would leave the three balls a finish ball. So I'll go one, six. And as soon as the rack is done, I'm going to take a quick break. And that worked out okay, leaving the one ball there to come down for the two. Two to one, Tom Hughes takes the lead. It's a race to five, and he's breaking next. I'll be back. Two one, I got.
All right, I'm back. Three to one is the score. Um, he was in the lead. Trying to continue that lead here on this one. Going to wobble that shot to the corner, but it's going to go in. That could have partially have been because of the fact that I was walking around to my chair. Shot to the corner is good. They've set, he's set up here for the 14 ball now. The eight ball is sitting down here, just below the seven ball. So he needs to make this shot. He needs to get onto that nine ball and then onto that 12 or 10, whatever it is that's sitting here that he's getting onto right now. One of those two balls you have to get onto. So it looks like he's going to go for perfect position here on the nine ball. Is he going to want to either have a follow through angle to come back down for the eight ball or a drawback angle to get down for the eight ball? He's going to try to draw all the way back and oh no, he's going to scratch the cue ball. Now, if that, if that hits the pocket and it stays up, you'll have the shot in the nine ball. He's likely going to be out from there. But a ball in hand means that his opponent, David Wilkes, is going to get a chance to get going here. Some clusters at the top of the table, but lots of ways to be able to open that up. And so he's saying just a shot here. Looking to freeze hook the white ball. Being patient. Not a bad thing to be. You want to figure out the best way possible to open up that cluster of balls where you have a shot at something after. And there's only two options below, which is the one on the seven ball. So you don't really want to gamble. You, you want to make sure that you get something set up properly here. Good choice to play the safety. Kick shot off the top rail is about the only option I can see for Tom Hughes. Going with the safety again. Not bad. If he would have pushed it right by the pocket, it would have been a little bit better because then he could have gone easily for the breakout after that, having an easy five. The five ball is pretty close to the pocket still, so it's not a bad option. And now the only thing is that he's hoping that his opponent doesn't hit the nine ball, which he should be able to do off a kick shot. He's calling the, he's calling the shot in the pocket. Why not? If you're going to hit it, you might as well try to make it. That's the way he's looking at it. You'll get the good hit, looking for a good result. And him hitting that five ball and leaving it where it was actually comes in handy in this situation. It's going to be the escape shot. Looking for the small window here on the six or the two. Needs that cue ball to come off the rail a little bit, and it does. Options for the three or the six, I believe. Makes the six. Has a drawback angle here on the three to get set up for the one. But I have to follow the cue ball forward off the one to get set up for the seven to the side pocket, if that's the way he's going to go on. 
And he set himself up over the ball here. He can still take the one ball, though, so it's not a bad thing. He can play the cue ball around three rails for the seven ball in the bottom left corner also if he wanted to, or just set up for the side pocket like he did. Kind of came up a little bit short on it, but he's, he's able to make the shot still. And the April should get pushed up a little bit. So you have to make the shot to the corner now. And this one here, I just try to make it pocket weight. So if you don't make it, then you don't really leave anything in that pocket. He's going to nail it, though. Oh, no, he's going to scratch. Oh, man. Made the shot, but he scratched. Four to one for Tom Hughes. He's on the hill. Did not expect that to happen. Just shot a little too fast. He thought about it. I talked to him a little bit. I said, don't think about it. Whatever you do, man, just play your game. Don't want it, right? The more you want it, the worse it gets in your head. So just don't want it, right? You can't, you can't take the nature out of the beast. <laughs> and the beast is going to sometimes think about it. Not happy about that result, especially because he played a good table, played a couple of good safeties, you know, and made sure that he played the pattern properly. Made a tougher shot there on the seven ball. It should have been out. Nothing you can do about it, but you obviously don't feel good. Um, he was feeling all right at the moment. He's on the hill. He's got a little bit of security because right now his opponent, David Wilkes, has to win every game remaining in the match. Putting Tom Hughes in a comfortable spot. Got a three game lead and an opportunity to be able to win now, but he's going to come up dry on the break. And Dave will get a chance to get going again. And at the table, trying to figure out what he wants to do. Solids and stripes are both available. Solids are obviously the easier starting point, though. Because of the three ball. Yeah, I have to take that seven ball to open up that five and two ball after this. So you got position on the four ball. A couple of different ways that you can play the seven ball afterwards. You can either play it straight with some draw to draw into that 13 and five. You can, um, I guess it all depends on where you does here the shape. The other option was to take the white ball. I thought he was going to roll it forward, so I was thinking taking the white ball off the five into the 13 and into the seven. Then that will push the five away from the two and open up the table a little bit. But no guarantee you're going to have a shot from there. Call the seven ball. Makes the seven ball, has a shot on the one. Nothing opened up for the two and the five ball, so he's going to have to figure out something there still. So he's going to have to eventually settle for a safety and let him get over to the left side of that two. Oh, well, that's going to leave the 13 ball open. So Tom doesn't have to break anything out here. Wide open table here as long as he doesn't get into any positional troubles. One of the two balls that might challenge him here could be the 14 ball. Um, maybe the 15 ball. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but the 14 ball maybe could be the problem ball. Oh my, look at that. What a break. Tom Hughes will scratch the cue ball off this shot, the opening shot on that turn. And that's going to give David Wilkes a ball in hand. Now he's looking at this table like he needs to figure something out, but I'm just going to make the two ball to the top right corner, follow it up for the five ball. You're good to go, man. You ask him on my solids? He's like, yeah, you're solids, man. He doesn't even know what he's shooting right now. That's the adrenaline pumping, right? He wants this thing. I know he wants it, but 
That's what I told him. So you can't want it. You have to just let it happen. Trust your inner pool player. Work it out. Let it happen. Oh no, then he missed the Epo and he scratched. Oh, when it rains, it pours, I tell you. And that's the way it's feeling right now for David Wilkes. Um, I'm going to say 0% chance he gets back to the table. Ball in hand for Tom Hughes. He's a premier level player here in Winnipeg. Used to playing against all the better players in Manitoba. Holding opportunity like this, he's going to capitalize. He might have scratched the last time around, but that was the only freebie. This time he's going to get out. I think the biggest thing here for him is taking that nine ball. That's the ball that I would take first. I just don't like where the nine ball is. Everything else I can deal with, but the nine ball, not a good spot. And if you take it right away, then you're out. And the 15 ball was the other option, which is what he's going to deal with now. I'm going to say like 99.5%, but um, he's going to finish the stable here on this turn. And Tom Hughes lost to Guy Smith in the A-side final, so he was looking for some revenge. You know, he, he was hoping to be able to get back to having a match with Guy Smith, and he's three balls away from doing so. We'll bounce off the rail on the nine is going to help for the position here. Taking a look at the eight ball to make sure he doesn't miss. What he's got to look at is making sure he doesn't scratch. He'll make the shot. He won't scratch. He's going to win it with a score of five to one. Five to one. And that's going to bring up our championship match between Guy Smith and Tom Hughes. Nice little matchup. Bring down the Fargo. What's up, guys? So we're going to put Guy Smith on the left because he won the A side. The race to nine now. Double dip too, so if Tom Hughes wins the first set, they will play a second set. The second set will be a race to five. I'm thinking there's like a 90% chance they're gonna try to work out some sort of split. Because I just know better. But we'll see. We're gonna get Ah. Well, I thought you guys were going to play a set of Whatever, if you guys want to play, that's fine. But that even, even Tim said that you guys were going to play at least one set. That's why I expected you guys to play a set. He left. He's got some damage but he's got almost. Okay. Okay. My knee's at the bar. They have it behind the bar. Nice shooting, man. It's all good. All right, so yeah, they're gonna split, guys. Sorry, they're gonna split. No match. Uh, zero zero. No match. 
Uh, it happens. I, I kind of had a feeling, you know, like I, like I said, the big percentage that they were going to end up splitting. I just knew it. But I thought they would at least play the first set. They, they're splitting. It's uh, 550, 3, 350, so they're going 500, 400. Uh, I might have a... I don't know if Jose is still here. If Jose is still here, I'll have a match for you guys after this. Because I'm here to play. But if he left, then I won't be able to. Or maybe I can play Greg Wilson a match if he wants to stick around and play. I'll have a challenge match or something like that. All right, nothing I can do about it. Uh, last highlight. The bang corner from Dave. Man, he had, he had a really good pool day, but the problem, I think, was that he just wanted it too much, man. He wanted it too much. And when you want it too much, thoughts get crept up in your head. You don't, you don't want it too much. I mean, everybody wants it, don't get me wrong. All the best players around you want it. They want it just as bad as you do, but they're not thinking about it. They're just playing. That's the difference, mentality. The Hangar Bailey's and Sports Lounge is where we're at. We're at 121 Scorefield Boulevard. Give them a call at 204-560-2929 if you're looking for maybe to book a spot for you and your crew. Christmas season is kind of now over, but the industry, the service industry is still kind of celebrating. Uh, right now it's summertime, but whatever you want to do, give these guys a call. They'll take care of you. Karaoke night, Bill. They can do that. They had a karaoke party a little while ago it was awesome actually everybody was just rocking it out too it was like set up in the back room so it kind of set up like a stage atmosphere the lighting was nice too you know so they were vibing it out vibing out having a good time to some karaoke of course they'll do uh pool tournaments for you guys too let me let me back up this camera a little bit because you know it's kind of <clears throat> i really thought i was going to stream more it's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, I get a chance to shoot some pool now, and I gotta take down my equipment, so it works out still an hour away before I get out of here. Um, but it was some good competition, and I wanted to see if Tom can get him back. But I will wait for that one for next time. Is that the front of the bar? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, yeah, I gotta take down my equipment. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna take down my equipment, I'm gonna play while I'm taking down my equipment. Um, all right, uh, before I go, it's at the bar, yeah. Second annual Moses Capital Memorial Nine Ball Pool Tournament happening June 14th to 16th, 16th at Dooley's Billiards in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. $110 entry. It's a 32 player limit on the men's division, race to seven, finals, race to nine. The women's is 24-player limit, race to seven, finals, race to nine. The juniors tournament is held in Broken Rock, Regina, Saskatchewan. It's a $25 entry. Nice shooting, man. Nice shooting to both players. They both play really well. Guy Smith was possessed today. I really wanted to see that championship match because I, I wanted to see if Tom could actually win that match and then force it for another one. But I had a good feeling that Guy Smith was going to win in the first set because the way he was playing, man... Ain't nobody messing around with that, you know. I, I I could see myself in that position, and nobody messing with me when I'm playing like that. Anyways, uh, going back to this event, it's a guaranteed first place, $2,500 plus jacket and trophy for the men's singles tournament. Guaranteed $1,500 for first place, plus a jacket and trophy for the women's division. And, and that's guaranteed. So whatever you guys put in for your entry fees, that's all going back towards second, third, fourth, and so on. All right? This is guaranteed money, no matter how many players show up. Uh, all right. If you guys want to register for that one, you can email them or send an e-transfer to kills2 at gmail.com. K-I-L-L-S-T-W-O at gmail.com. I'm going to be there to stream it, too. Nice shooting, man. So if you guys are there, I'll get a chance to see you there. It's, it's busy here. It doesn't really look like it right now, right? I know it doesn't. Um, hmm. Hang on. I got an idea because it is busy. I just like it doesn't really look as busy right now, but it is busy. So let me fix this up. I'm in the middle. 
Dave's not feeling too happy right now, but he did pretty good for himself. I'd be happy with it. No, it's not letting me see it in this way. Oh yeah, this is working. Somebody's walking in the way though. I don't know, I'm trying to set it up so you can see the background here, but uh, I, might, I might come back with a match, I don't know. I didn't warm up though, so I don't like playing when I haven't warmed up. See there, it's kind of steady on the other side. Really, really nice shooting, man. Really good shooting. I was hoping that I would have seen another set because I, I figured like you're going to win, but I wanted to just see Tom try to beat you the first time, right? Because I don't think I don't think he would have beat you the first time what do you mean? if you guys played the set. I know, I know. You're playing really good today. Like I said, you're playing like possessed, right? So like, like when people play like that, you just leave them alone. Give them, give them the ball. Give them the the cue and the chalk. Let them go have fun. <laughs> Simpler game though. Yeah. Not as much ball movement. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I can see you're playing really good. Yeah, good for you, man. Right time too, just before the playoffs. He's a fucking top guy. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a good player. He doesn't get too many chances, but that's why I said I wanted to see like if he would have been able to, right? Because if anybody could do it, it's him. So. But you shot really good. I don't think he would have beat you. Yeah, good for you, man. Congratulations. I'm 62. It's a grind. Oh, I know, man. You look, you looked fresh out there while you were playing. You looked fresh while you were playing. Yeah. Yeah. Billiard yeah. Billiard from 7.30 to 10.30. Yeah. Jumped in my car and came here. Oh, wow. Yeah. But he, he came to me on the goals. Yeah, yeah. I kind of figured. It's all good. It is what it is. I can beat him. I can feel like I can. I know, I know you would have. You would have beat, beaten anyone. Like you, even me at my best game, you would have beaten me today. Is you you're playing good. This guy? Uh, no, no. He's he's a premier level player, right? Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Like Tom plays really good pool. Like his position play is good, and the shot making is really good. Like breaks are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's not an easy player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he plays like that, man. Good for you. Congratulations, man. It's good. Yeah. Just stay away from me. <laughs> we'll see you. Guys, Smith enjoying the moment. First time winning an eight ball tournament. Play like a monster today. Uh, Robert Griffith on YouTube says, Howdy, Rod. Watching you from Fort Worth, Texas. Here to see the totality eclipse Monday the 8th. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about the eclipse. It won't come around for like another 10 years, they say, right? And Dixie says, well, that sucks. Yeah, I know. And she says, Robert Griffith and Joy, that would be so cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. Um, all right, I guess we're done. I don't know. What else can I do for you guys? That's it. Uh, I might find a match here. I don't know. I'm thinking about it because I'm already here and I'm kind of itching to play pool. Go to jamofapparel.com if you want to find some of this gear. Anything you like, you got any questions on it, message me, rod at jamofapparel.com. You got any gear that you already bought from Jam Up Something Customs? Take a picture, send it to me at jamofapparel or rod at jamofapparel.com. See you, man. Everybody's leaving, they're all quitting. The only one that's around still is Greg, so I might play him. May not be pretty though, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you guys enjoy the coverage. This is the way I usually work.
And on my YouTube channel, it's my personal channel, so there's not just pool. It's like everything else I do, too. Uh, indoor, outdoor sports, concerts, wedding, socials, whatever. Whatever you can think of, I can do the work for you. And I, I love what I do, so trust me, it'll be good work. Uh, but good reason to follow that YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel anyway if you can. I appreciate it. And if you're one of the people that subscribe to the YouTube channel and you end up going into the commercial part, uh, try not to skip it. If you skip it, I don't think I get paid for skip commercials, but I do get paid for the commercials that are watched. Um, and if you don't like them, just mute it. Or don't support it. It's okay, you know. But that's the whole point of trying to get to the 1,000 subscribers so I can try to monetize from ads. But I don't know. YouTube is kind of annoying the way they put their ads, ads everywhere. My wife was saying that the other day too. She's like, she's trying to watch a stream and the guy's about to make an intense shot and boom, it's a McDonald's commercial. All of a sudden she's hungry. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. I just choke her up. But she was saying about how it cuts off like in the middle of an important shot and, and it kind of kills the mood. So I don't know. We got to figure that out. All right, guys, that's it. We're out of here. Cool wisdom. I'm probably going to end up having a challenge match. I don't know. I got to warm up first, though, and see how I do. So if I do have a challenge match, it'd be in about 20 minutes from now. It'll be fine if I, if I have one. But Greg's a tough competitor. If he wants to play me, it'll be a, it'll be a good time. Uh, the more you sweat in practice, the less you bleed in battle. Get to the tables and become the champion within. The only way to get there is by working through the moments, right? The tough moments, especially when you're frustrated, you want to give up. Time to hang up the cues and give it a break or time to hang up the cues and go home when you're at the pool hall those are the moments that are there to challenge you to grow the most and when you walk away you limit yourself when you stay there and you work work through it for a little bit longer even if it's just 15 minutes more that's all it takes you overcame an obstacle right next time half hour next time you know you won't be bothered in those moments you're just going to overcome them um that's how you grow that's how you become the champion within it's not just the skill at the table guys it's also the mentality but the skill at the tables is what gets you there to be able to be introduced to the dance it's the mentality that allows you to dance the best way that you can at the table i don't know if that made sense but that's the way i was going with it all right i hope you guys enjoy the stream if i come back it'll be in about 15 20 minutes with a matchup against greg wilson if he wants to play he's got his keys put away though but i don't know i might tempt him maybe play for something small i'm not really supposed to gamble i usually don't gamble but maybe a little sweat equity you know <laughs> Anyways, add me or follow me on, on Facebook if you guys want to. Uh, don't forget to follow our Facebook page as well. If this is the first time you guys found us on Facebook. If this is the first time you found me on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like the stream, you can like the stream by exiting the chat. If you exit the chat, it'll give you the option to like the stream. It also gives you the option to share the stream, but I'm not too late to share the stream now. You could share the stream later when I'm playing my challenge match if I play one. Barry Bremer, sir. Bremer says he sure is a great cash too. And Dixie says, good night. Good night, Dixie. Dave, one pocket will, says Barry Bremner. All right. I'll see you guys at the tables next time, which is going to be tomorrow for the Sunday Open. Don't miss out on that one. Every Sunday, wicked competition. I'm sure tomorrow's going to be the same. Tune in tomorrow to watch who's going to be the champion. It's probably not going to be me. I don't know. Did I try to defend my title? Good night. I've been playing like crap all week. Maybe it's just a Sunday thing. I don't know. I'll think about it. By the way, I'll see you guys at the tables tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for liking and sharing the stream. And thank you for taking the time to interact. You guys are awesome. Good night. <laughs>